saw me swear from the testimony presented will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help you God. I do. You may proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. Good afternoon, ma'am. If you'd please tell the members of the jury your name. Uh, Stacy Livingston. Let me ask you to just scoot up just a little bit closer to that microphone just to make sure we can hear you. Uh, where are you employed? Sanford Fire Department. And how long with the Sanford Fire Department? A little over 25 years. Your current position there is what? Firefighter EMT. And what does EM EMT stand for? Emergency Medical Technician. Are you certified in the state of Florida as both a firefighter and an EMT? Yes. And what are your duties as a firefighter EMT with the Sanford Fire Department? Anything from fire calls to medical calls or anything that the citizens call for. All right. Can you give the jury a brief description of your training and education uh, that has prepared you for your duties as a firefighter and EMT? I went through the certification of Florida to become a firefighter, also state of Florida for EMT, and we have continuing education at work. All right. Let me turn your attention then to the evening of Sunday, February 26, 2012, where you work in that evening. Yes. And on that evening, were you dispatched to the scene of a person shot at the retreat at Twin Lakes Complex here in Sanford, Seminole County, Florida? Yes. Where were you uh, when you were dispatched to the call? At Fire Station 38. And were you dispatched along with other firefighters and EMTs? Yes. Do you recall the time of the dispatch? I do not. Was it approximately 7.20 in the evening? Yes. All right. And can you give the jury an idea of about how long it took you to arrive? It would be a guess. Let me just ask you to look at this document. Um, it's just to refresh your recollection, Your Honor. And ask you, was that uh, the incident report created from this event? Yes. All right. Is um, on that report, is there a time of dispatch, either on the first page or the second page? Yes. And what time uh, was your unit uh, dispatched? 1921. That's 721 p.m.? Yes. And what time is there an arrival time? 1927. 727 p.m.? Correct. All right. About six minutes later? Yes. All right. Was the Sanford Police Department and officers um, already on the scene when you arrived? Yes. And were you directed to the location of the shooting victim when you arrived? Yes. Did you later learn that person's name to be Trayvon Martin? Yes. And were Sanford police officers present with Trayvon Martin's body when you arrived? Yes. And what were those officers doing? Uh, CPR. How was Trayvon Martin's body positioned when you got there? On his back. And did you and other Sanford Fire Rescue personnel take over the CPR uh, when you arrived? We didn't take over CPR, but we took over assessing him. Okay. Did you, did you check Trayvon Martin for a pulse? Yes. How did you do that? On his carotid, on his neck. On his neck? Yes. And what did you find? No pulse. While you were treating or evaluating Trayvon Martin, did you move his clothing in any way? Yes. And what did you move specifically? I lifted his shirt. Did you notice anything in Trayvon Martin's sweatshirt when you moved it? Yes. And what was that, as best you can recall? I wasn't sure what it was at the time. I know what it is now. Okay. <laughs> well, first of all, where was it? In the front of his sweatshirt. All right. What, what was it? It felt like a can. All right. What did you do with it, if anything? I took it out and just moved it to my right side behind right. me. Did you take time uh, to examine the can for any reason? No. Why not? 
wasn't my concern. I was just trying to get to the patient. All right. Did you detect or feel anything else in Trayvon's Mar in Trayvon Martin's sweatshirt when you moved it? Yes. And what was that? It just felt like maybe a small bag. When I moved the shirt, it made like a kind of like a crinkling noise. All right. Did you do anything with that small bag? I did not. And was that item also in Trayvon Martin's sweatshirt? I wasn't exactly where it was, but when I moved the shirt up, I felt it, but it wasn't large enough to be in my way. All right. When you pulled up Trayvon Martin's sweatshirt, did you see any injuries? Yes. And specifically, did you see um, what appeared to be a gunshot wound? Yes. And where was that? In his chest. And what steps uh, did you and the other personnel take to assess Trayvon Martin? Uh, we put on a cardiac monitor. And what's the purpose of that? To assess the heart rhythm. And what was determined from the cardiac monitor? It was determined by the lead paramedic on the scene that the rhythm, sorry, the rhythm was incompatible to life. And was Trayvon Martin then pronounced dead at the scene? Yes. Does your uh, report, does the report from the incident um, indicate the time that Trayvon Martin was pronounced dead? On the report that yes, I have here? Yes, ma'am. Nineteen thirty. Seven thirty. Yes. All right, and that was just uh, a few minutes after you arrived. About three minutes after you arrived. Okay. Yes. Okay. At any point, did you hear Trayvon Martin make any sounds? No. Did you or anyone from your agency transport Trayvon Martin's body from the scene? No. And why not? That wouldn't be part of our job. Is that something when a person's deceased that's left for the medical examiner's office? <clears throat> Yes. Other than um, taking the can out of Trayvon Martin's shirt pocket, uh, did you move or collect any other items on or around him? No. All right, let me ask you to look at your screen. Your Honor, would you dim the lights? Thank you. States Exhibit 20, do you recognize that? Yes. And is that a fair and accurate depiction of the way Trayvon Martin appeared after um, he was pronounced? Well, we had his shirt up, but yes. Okay. And states 25 from the other side, is that also uh, an accurate depiction of the way he appeared? Yes. And states 80? Yes. And states 28, um, what's depicted in that photograph? The gunshot wound. And that obviously would be uh, when his sweatshirts were pulled up? Yes. Your Honor, that's all I have for the lights. All right. After Trayvon Martin was pronounced dead, did you treat a man later identified to you as George Zimmerman at that same scene? Yes. Do you see that individual in court this afternoon? I don't know. Yes. Is he the gentleman standing to my left? Yes. All right. Your Honor, I ask that the record reflect the witnesses that identify the defendant. The record is so reflect. Where was the defendant when you made contact with him? Uh, sitting in a police car. And when you met with the defendant, uh, did you talk to him? Yes. Did the defendant appear to have any difficulty understanding what you were saying? No. Did you have any difficulty understanding the defendant when he responded to you? No. Did the defendant appear to have any memory problems? No. You object to that, Your Honor, that would be speculation. Sustained. And since it got out before the objection, I would need to move to strike the answer. Okay. Um, ladies and gentlemen, you're to um, disregard the question and the answer. What is a Glasgow coma score? It's a scoring system that we use to determine the level of responsiveness of a patient. And what, what are the components of it? What makes it up? It has three sections for eye, verbal, and motor response. And they each have a series of numbers, of, <clears throat> excuse me, like a score. For example, for eye, it's 4321. It would be spontaneous uh, to command, to pain, and none. 
and each section has a different amount of numbers for a score. All right. Um, and what's the highest score someone can get? That is the, the most alert someone can be. A 15. And what was the defendant's Glasgow coma score that evening? 15. And what does that highest score indicate to you? It would indicate that for eye response, it was spontaneous. For vocal response, he was oriented. And for motor response, he obeyed commands. Did you observe any injuries to the defendant? Yes. And what injuries did you observe? Um, he had a very swollen, bleeding nose. He had lacerations to the back of his head. Was the defendant's nose actively bleeding when you arrived? I don't believe it was actively bleeding. All right. It was still you, moist. Okay. But. What did you do to treat his nose? We just tried to clean up his injuries so we could see them better to determine. And describe the lacerations that you saw on the back of the defendant's head. I recall two lacerations, approximately an inch long. All right. Were either of those lacerations bleeding? Not actively bleeding, but they had been. And how did you treat the lacerations to the defendant's head? The same. We just tried to clean up a little so we could view better what the injury was. At any point while you were treating the defendant, did he stand up? Yes. Did the defendant have any trouble with his balance when he stood up? I don't believe so. And about how long uh, were you treating the defendant? Maybe five minutes. Did you transport the defendant from the scene? No. And why not? It was determined that if he needed further medical treatment that the Sanford police would take him. And after you completed your examination of the defendant, did you leave the defendant in the custody of the Sanford Police Department? Yes. All right. Did you have any further involvement with the defendant after you left him with the police officers? No. All right. Let me ask you to look at the, uh, the screen again, Your Honor. Thank you. States Exhibit <clears throat> 79. Is that a fair and accurate depiction of the defendant as he appeared in the back of the officer's patrol car? Yes. And State 76. Is that a fair and accurate depiction of the back of his head when you came upon him? Yes. All right. Your Honor, that's all I have. Thank you. <clears throat> Cross. Thank you, Your Honor. Afternoon, ma'am. Hi. How are you? Good. Speaking about when you came in contact with my client, George Zimmerman, um, he was in the back of the patrol car, correct? Yes. And we just saw a couple of pictures of him. And in the front picture, I want to talk about first. Um, you didn't actually do the evaluation, did you, on him? The, the, the sort of workup, wasn't that? Um, two other paramedics that were out there as well, correct? What do you mean evaluation? Well, I'm sort of who did sort of the workup on Mrs. Zimmerman to identify injuries and whatnot. Wasn't Mike Brandy in charge of sort of lead in that? I believe it was myself and firefighter Kevin O'Rourke who treated Mr. Zimmerman. Okay. Was it Mike Brandy there as well? <clears throat> he was on the scene. Okay. And, um, when you did the evaluation, you noticed that the nose was swollen. I think you said very swollen, correct? Yes, it was very swollen. Okay. Um, explain, we saw the picture. Let's take a moment to look at that. Um, I'm going to look for a little bit of help. I think I can get there. Thank you, Your Honor. Let's go down. No, I can just do it in here. Great, thank you. Which one? The one right there, thanks. So looking at this one, um, first of all, this does fairly and accurately depict his nose and his face, correct, as you saw it? 
Yes, I believe we may have even, because we wiped it a bit. So even bef well, was that before this picture, do you know? I don't know. Okay. Um, so tell me what you see there as far as his injuries, if you can be a bit more descriptive. Uh, the bridge of his nose is very swollen. And that's off to his, the right of the nose, that swelling area there, is that what you're speaking of? I, I recall bo both sides being swollen. Okay, so the nose itself may be more on the right, but I was going to ask, the, the, the left side is swollen as well, isn't it? The entire area was quite okay. swollen. Um, and what is that just um, on the bridge of the nose sort of going towards his right eye? That little red spot. It appears to be a laceration, a small laceration. Did you note that as well, that he had a laceration on the nose? I did not. Okay. How, how does a person get a laceration like that? I don't know. Okay. Um, in your experience, is that consistent with getting struck in the nose by it, a fist? It could. Okay. Uh, similar to the injuries to the nose itself and the swelling, are they also consistent with a fist strike to the nose? Very possibly. Okay. And um, do you see the, the injuries to what would be closest to you, his left forehead? Do you see those markings up there? Yes. What, what is that? Looks like an abrasion. Okay. Can you tell how that may have been, uh, how, how he was injured with that? I cannot. Okay. Would you agree that that would be a separate injury from the injury to his nose? Yes. Now let's talk about what seems to be on the tip of his nose. What is that? Blood. And is that what you talked about earlier, that it was still <coughs> moist in the process of drying? Yes. Where was that, where was that coming from? His nose. Inside? Yes. What does that indicate to you? An injury to the nose. Of what sort? What happens when the nose bleeds? How does it start bleeding? Specifically? Well, um, as best you can, if you can, describe how a, a shot to the nose would cause bleeding like that. What has to happen to it? I mean, blood vessels would initiate bleeding. Okay, and those blood vessels that exist up in the nose, correct? Yes. Any idea what happens to the blood that breaks or that, that escapes from blood vessels when you're laying on your back? What if you had that injury and you were laying on your back? Where would the blood go? You would probably swallow it. You go back up into your sinuses? Correct. And then back down the back of your throat? Correct. And then, if you could, you'd be swallowing your own blood, right? Right. You can put the lights up if you would. Thank you very much. Um, the injuries that we talked about on the back of the head, um, similar. They, you saw them that night the same way, correct? Yes. Um, and then you cleaned them off? I did. And you could see lacerations that you identified as being about an inch long each, correct? Approximately. All right. Um, not actively bleeding when you saw them? No. What is, do you have a concern with head injuries? When you see a head injury, similar to this, what concerns come to you? Concerns meaning? Well, what medical issues are you down to? If you were to see, as you did, those two one-inch lacerations on the back of his head, did you have any concerns for any medical condition that may be happening to Mrs. Zimmerman because of those injuries? Yeah, we had, um, in questioning him, we asked, you know, had he lost consciousness? Did he, had he, well, he, I think he's the one that said he had felt dizzy. Mm -hmm. um, we just continued to question him about that. You would be concerned as a first responder to um, possible concussive injuries from an injury like that? Correct. Where you can get a concussion when your head is hit that way? Correct. Um, and even brain injury, is that a possibility from an injury like that? Possibly. And something that you need to be aware of? 
Yes. And you were only aware of that and concerned about it as you were treating him, correct? Yes. Reasonable, in your opinion, for somebody who has incurred those type of injuries to be about their medical safety? Possibly. And how about the nose? Would, would that cause you concern about a person's medical safety if that injury was um, caused to them? Possibly. Did, um, what is the normal um, procedure for head injuries and getting them x-rayed? Well, we, they would have to be transported to a medical facility to receive an x-ray. Sure, you can't get x-rays just in the back of your ambulance, right? Right. So you'd have to take them to the hospital? If they choose to go. And who helps make that decision? If the patient is fully awake and alert, it's, it, they can make the decision. So you, is it that final decision actually left up to the non-medical personnel? It was discussed and we explained that we would be happy to transport him and I'm not exactly how the determination was made, but I knew that it was determined that if he was gonna receive medical care, the police was gonna take him. So that sort of became the police responsibility at that point, correct? Correct. Had it not been for the police involvement, would you have suggested to the person who had that injury and the injuries in the back of his head to go get some x-rays? We would have said the same thing, that we would ha be happy to transport him, but it would have been up to them. Okay. If I might just have a moment, Your Honor. be done. Um, you said that he was able to get up, um, and, and did you say he stood up without trouble? Or I couldn't quite hear exactly what you said when you were asked about was he able to stand? When we got to him, he was actually sitting sideways in the police car. With he his was, sort of feet out of the car? And his, yes. Okay. The door was open and his feet were out. All right. And when, however, it came about that he had said he had been dizzy, we asked him to stand up to see if he still felt dizzy, and he was able to stand up. With the assistance of Officer Smith and one of the paramedics, correct? Because he was handcuffed behind his back, wasn't he? I don't recall if he was handcuffed behind his back. Okay, you don't recall that? I don't. Do you recall Officer Tim Smith helping him out of the car when he was complaining about being dizzy? I do not. Okay, do you remember whether it was um, paramedic uh, Mike Brandy who helped him out of the car as well when he complained about being dizzy. I do not. Okay, your focus is really on injuries, clear them up, identify them, and then evaluate, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Nothing further. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> From your observations of the defendant, both his physical condition and his mental uh, capabilities. Did you have any concern that he had sustained a brain injury? I wouldn't make that determination. Did the defendant ever complain, other than of dizziness, did he ever complain of a headache or excruciating pain, anything like that? Not to me. Did he ever lose consciousness? No, while you were, while not you were while there? we were with him. Did, you, did someone ask him whether or not he had lost consciousness prior to your arrival? I believe so. What did he say? I, I didn't, I'm not the one that asked, so I don't know. Did you ever take the time to, to measure either of the lacerations on the back of his head? No. All right, so your um, testimony about them being approximately an inch, that would be a guess? 
approximately an inch, yes. All right. Would you defer to someone who actually measured them? I'm sorry? Would you defer the length of each of the lacerations to someone who actually measured them? To be exact, yes. All right. Thank you, ma'am. Judge, that's all I have. Thank you. May Ms. Livingston be excused? She may. Yes, Your Honor. Thank, Thank you. you very much. You may be excused. Call your next.